And so this is the uh, June 27th meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I am David Bloomberg. Here with me on the board are Elizabeth Silver, Sherry Taylor, and Maureen Scanlon, and um, Nathan Chung from the off uh, North City of Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing staff support. Um, we have three items on the agenda, but before we get to those, uh, I do want to announce that this hearing is being video recorded. Um, also, when we get to the hearing items, uh, we will ask uh, anyone who wishes to speak to identify yourself by with name and address for the record that's being kept um, and to uh, address all comments to the board. Um, and But we'll start each matter by hearing a brief summary by the applicant or the representative of the applicant of the permit uh, or finding being requested. Then the board members will have an opportunity to ask any questions that we have. And after that, uh, members of the public who are present will have an opportunity to ask questions about uh, the, each application. Um, before we get to the first item on the agenda, um, we always open with an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here from the public who wants to address the board about matters other than the three matters that are on the agenda for tonight, um, is there anyone here who has any general comments for the board that other than relating to the three applications on the agenda? Are we seeing anyone, Nathan? No, I believe it's Rachel is the applicant for five Fulton later today on Alan also. Okay. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make you guys co-hosts just you know um, well actually I will just make not make those guys co-hosts until we're ready to start. But please raise your hand or uh, type into chat if you have some concerns. But yeah, I don't see anybody. So again, if you anybody want to raise your hands for a general public comment, not on the agenda. And not seeing yeah, any, we'll no. proceed to the first item. It's past 5.30, so we'll uh, first. And by the way, the third item on the agenda um, on Fulton Road, I have a conflict, uh, and I will recuse myself from that item. I'll be here for the first two. Um, and then if the board wants, I can stick around uh, for, because I think we have some votes on some minutes, uh, and we have to talk about some scheduling, summer scheduling matters. So I won't. Uh, disappear. I will just recuse myself and not participate in the hearing on the third item of the agenda. Um, the first item is um, a request for a special permit to update a non-conforming rear sign submitted by Mass Signs, the property at 971 Bridge Road, map ID 18D-70. Um, this uh, hearing was continued from the original scale, scheduled date of June 13th due to uh, lack of a quorum for the board on June 13th. Um, I will remind the members of the board that this uh, special permit requires a supermajority vote of three of three members. We have three members plus one alternate, uh, and I believe Sherry's the alternate, yes? And yeah. uh, yes. so the three voting members will be um, Elizabeth, Maureen, and me, And uh, but we, we welcome the input of, of all members, regular and, and alternate members. Um, and um, the publication of this hearing on this special permit was made on May 30th and June 6th, 2024. So with that, um, I'll ask the applicant or the representative of the applicant to provide us with a brief overview of the uh, uh, the uh, request that's being made for the special permit. And if again, if people could identify themselves by name and address for the record, please. Number one, thank you very much for hearing me out here this evening. Uh, my name is Adam Nixa from Mass Signs, uh, 988 Southampton Road in Westfield. On behalf of Goodwill, uh, we are updating their signage on the property there uh, as uh, they're going through a little bit of a investment uh, throughout the uh, their different locations. And this is the first one that they're hitting currently this year. And as it continues on, there'll be other locations next year. But this one in particular itself, uh, as this one is uh, explained after a detailed conversation with Nathan of being a rather unique property where this is uh, what we're looking for is to place the channel letter sign, which I don't know if we have a sample of there or if I need to uh, share a picture of what have you here of this in particular on the 
what's considered their front entrance of their building, but it's technically the rear of the property. Um, so it's the where this one here as it is sits, the existing light box sign above the door uh, is at a height of uh, 155 inches from grade. So above the 10 foot requirement for a rear wall sign. Uh, to put it at 10 feet, you'd be right in the middle of the glass of the windows. Uh, so physical improbability of doing so at a 10 foot height. So we're looking for uh, review and hopefully approval of this placement of this replacement sign to replace the older faded uh, light box wall sign with this new updated channel letter sign uh, for Goodwill. And I'm wondering if it's possible, Nathan, to screen share. It might be helpful, especially, I suppose, for members of the public, if any. Let me see if I can. Yes, uh, I, 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 um, Adam, I can share if you want, or I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, if, if you can, because I'm not sure how to do that on my end here. Yeah, so I'll just share it now. Okay. Um, I think these, so this one is the. So location uh, wise to the rear of the building of where the existing, so. This is technically their front entrance, even though it's facing the rear of their property. Uh, the rear of the building faces the front. It's a little backwards, a little unique on the actual building placement. Um, so just for actual placement there, as you can see the existing uh, light box sign over the doorway here uh, with the channel letter sign to the left of that um, match to size in terms of square footage. So it's not any larger. It's actually uh, same, actually just a little bit smaller under the a hair under the 25 square feet, how, you know, detailed you want to be with that, but to match in, in, in overall 25 square footage there uh, that the existing sign is. So nothing larger than that height wise. It's also uh, justified to the bottom of the existing sign light box sign. And given that this one is actually the new channel letter sign, uh, will be um, seven inches shorter than the existing. So it'll be overall height will be reduced by seven inches from the existing sign to the new sign. And um, the old sign is a light box. Can you just remind us what the lighting will be for the new sign? Uh, given with the lighting requirements there, all the uh, existing sign is uh, powered by high output fluorescent lamps. Uh, whereas obviously with to meet uh, lighting requirements uh, with this as well with the uh, bylaws set forth, uh, I am actually implementing an adjustable dimmable LED system in this particular um, LED set so that it can be dimmed to meet uh, lighting requirements. Is that dimming automatic? No, nope. manual. Manual. So, so it will be so it will be set to it can be. Uh, done in increments of percentage from zero all the way up to 100 with a, a little your remote control. So it will be set and that's what it will be set at to meet uh, those uh, brightness requirements. So it doesn't require somebody to continually. No, no, nope. it, it will be, it's basically set it and forget it. Right. To make sure it complies with the new dark skies. Correct. Yep. Um, uh, any board members, any? Um... I don't remember reading about the hours of illumination in relation to the business hours, the open hours of the store. I'm not sure on behalf of what their set hours are with the store itself, uh, but uh, otherwise there, I believe that they do have uh, everything there on time clocks on the property. Uh, that I can confirm. I don't have that 100% uh, information up front with me here, uh, but otherwise there, if there was uh, you no know, to meet with uh, with regard to guidelines for illumination that they be off by, you know, operating hours or, you know, if it's by, you know, uh, 11 p.m. or whatever the, the actual set time is, it, you know, the recommendation will be followed to, to meet uh, those guidelines. And I mean, if you want Maureen and the rest of the board, I can quickly look it up. Um, there's some there's some discrepancy, but uh, it, it basically one section of the lighting when it says at the closing of business, the light, light lighting needs to be turned off at the close of business. 
there's another sec section that says uh, an hour after, but I think it's probably safer to um, assume the, the the more stricter one at the close of business. And actually, I'm direct. I mentioned it to the director, and we are trying to clarify that. Yeah, I, I to save um, any further back and forth. I think we would want to give ourselves the opportunity to define that as part of what we choose to approve. And I think that our discrepancy, I recall situations where it came up where it had to do with giving the employees time, you know, especially in winter months when it's dark, to go out to their cars, uh, still having some illumination. So I I would I think it's it's important to clarify, Nathan, but I think there I, I can remember there was a rationale for going for the hour beyond, and it may not apply to certain kinds of businesses, but perhaps to retail businesses. Right, and let me just pop up the... The other thing I noticed that um, is a change that I don't think came up specifically tonight is, is that you're moving it, right, from over the doorway to centering it on that facade. Ideally, we'd like to do that as the aesthetically it looks more balanced that way. Um, that is a, the request, yes. Yeah, so that's part of your application. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how we would consider this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Any other questions? No, I just um, clarifying the standard that the sign would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest. Is that accurate? I think that's correct, right, Nathan? Right. Uh -huh. That's uh, 7.2M. I'll just quickly give me one second. Sorry. Other than that, I don't have any questions. Sounds like a good improvement to me. Exactly. While well, Nathan's checking, they're, they're making it uh, less tall, a little longer, but overall smaller. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a more updated lighting uh, technique, more yeah. efficient, more everything's on the essentially the beautification of the of the building and architecture and updating of the the brand to be a you know more publicly appealing itself there uh, you know even just as a comment of my own you know obviously sharing the parking lot with CVS uh, that abuts the same property there you know having the same type of channel letters on their building as well too. So obviously it has carries a little bit of consistency with the uh, commercial buildings within the existing uh, neighborhood, so to speak. Right. And it's, as you say, it's, it's facing a fairly large parking lot and Correct. another commercial property. Um, yep. There is some housing to the, would that be North of it, but to the North of it. Yes. But, um, but uh, that's mostly there's blocked by a, a uh, I don't, don't want to say a significant, but it is blocked by a tree line there as well. So, you know, certainly I'd have more concern of the parking lot lights than a channel letter sign on a building itself. But that's just me. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, okay. um, any other questions from board members? Nope. And if not, um, are there any members of the public who wanted to address uh, this application for this uh, sign on the rear slash front of the Goodwill building uh, facing uh, CVS. Do we see anybody, Nathan, raising their hands? Uh, you no, know, but everybody here else are applicants for the next hearing. Okay, so, um, sure. Yeah, but if you want to comment on it, please raise your hands or type in uh, into chat saying I have a comment and I can unmute you. Yeah, uh, don't uh, see any. Yeah, I don't see any. And sure. yeah, I can I can read a 7.2 M um or M um language. Well, I, think okay. I think we're okay. I think we're good. Okay. I think good. I believe Elizabeth captured the essence yeah. of it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um the um there was a, a little discussion brought, raised by Maureen about perhaps having a condition uh requiring the light to be switched off at close of business. We can yeah, uh, perhaps incorporate that into a motion. If I feel uncomfortable with that, I think for the safety of the employees, you need an hour for them to get out of the building. That makes no sense to me. Although there's other lighting in the parking lot, but I'm fine with my personally, I'm fine with an hour yeah. also. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what we just did. The, the 
most or one of the more recent hearings. An hour after. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a question, Ma Maureen? No, I, I could say I could say we might consider or to conform with um with standards defined by the uh Department of Planning and Sustainability because I that, yeah. I think you know, it's true as a that's a little of... awkward because they haven't been defined yet, right? Right. So I thought you were going to say conform with the uh, the dark sky ordinance, which is true whether we say it or not, that requirement. But I, I'm feeling like that might be a little bit vague insofar as those standards haven't applied. I don't know if people feel otherwise. I suppose you could say as 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 established from time to time, but that, that feels kind of vague to me for, for a... Why don't we just keep it simple and just say within an hour of close of business? Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess we would first, as long as we're... Uh, comfortable that we don't need any more input from the applicant. Um, there are no members of the public um, here for this one. Um, we could entertain a motion to close the public hearing. We can have discussion after that, but we cannot hear any more input from the applicant. Do we have such a motion? So moved. Any okay, second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, and uh, since we're virtual, we have to have a roll call for each vote, including this one. So I'll ask Nathan to just to do a roll right. call. Yes. Vote on, this is the vote on the motion to close the public hearing. Yeah. Motion to close the public hearing by roll call. Um, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. And Maureen? Yes. Okay. So that's unanimous. Uh, public hearing is closed, but don't go anywhere, anyone. We're continue with discussion. And if people feel uh, they're ready, a uh, motion on the request for the special permit. I am very comfortable with this application as okay. uh, we're defining. I think it's an improvement and I think the placement is gonna be an improvement. I think the um, new, the refresh of the sign is gonna bring it up to date and make it a more appealing entrance. So I would be ready to move forward with a vote. Okay, sounds good. Do you wanna... Uh... Craft a motion. Ooh, well, I could try. So I move that we approve the uh, request for a ZBA special permit to update a non-conforming rear sign by Mass Signs at 971 Bridge Road, map ID 18D70, continued from the original schedule date of 613. Uh, the one condition I would attach to it is that we request, we require that the illumination be shut off within an hour of the closing hours of the store. Okay. Does that cover? Second. No second. Yeah, I think so. Second. Um, in just terms of discussion, I think we're all in agreement that this um, satisfies the standard required uh, by 350-7.2M um, based on the discussions we've had. Um, and uh, I... Uh, I had one other thought, but uh, can't be that important. So, okay. So I guess we, if we have a second, we can uh, uh, vote by roll call uh, on the motion with that condition. Yes. And before I, uh, may I make a comment? Please. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the thing we're trying to clarify in the lighting ordinance section is 12.2 um, subsection, um, far be subsection C and E. Um, one section says all business sign lights uh, must be turned off at the close of business. The next section, E, literally like one section below says sign lighting and illuminated signs must be turned off one hour, or one hour after the close of the business. So we are trying to clarify this, but, you know, I understand uh, the board wants, the board requested that condition so we can include that. But, you know, in case the more stricter requirement um for the line light to be turned off after close of business applies, once we get clarification, I think that stricter requirement would uh, come into play. Yeah, I think, in other words, I think we're all doing that with the understanding and the applicant should have the understanding that if a determination is made that that stricter standard applied, applies, then notwithstanding what we've said in our, in our decision, mm -hmm. uh, under the other ordinance, the stricter standard would apply and the lights would have to be turned out at close of business. Um, I mean, uh, I Understood. We could make that explicit, but I don't think we need to. I remember the other comment I was gonna make, and that is I see from the, the staff 
report that there were DPW had no comments on this, um, Nathan, and you didn't receive any other letters or correspondence or calls or emails on this from anyone else, correct? There was one call from somebody nearby, but there was a misunderstanding. This person thought something in the front is going to be updated, but as soon as I explained to him, it's a rear sign, and also it's, it's a rear sign, the person um, was not concerned at all. Good, thanks. So, Good. so yeah. Nick, I think now we can do a vote by roll call on the, the, the uh, motion as with the, with the one condition. Right. And so by roll call, David? Yes. Uh, Maureen? Yes. And Elizabeth? Yes. Good. That's unanimous. So that passes. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. It, it, it does look, I think it, I agree. I think we all agree. It's, it's, it looks like a nice improvement. And, and for a, for a business that, that really helps a lot of people in the, in the area. Um, so, uh, the applicant can work with Nathan's office on next steps. I'm not sure we have to go into them now, um, if that's okay. Uh, especially because we're it's past uh, 5.45, so we can proceed, if everybody is uh, comfortable, to the matter that was set for hearing uh, at 5.45 tonight. It's now 5.54, um, which was a request for a finding uh, to enclose a side porch and add a rear mudroom uh, while staying within existing nonconforming setbacks, submitted by George Gregor Miles Toulson Wimmer at 27 Woodbine Ave, map ID 25A 156. This uh, findings permit requires a simple majority vote, uh, meaning two of the three members. Uh, it's a discretionary permit, and the standard we need to apply in hearing this is uh, to determine that the proposed changes will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming conditions. And um, that is under, um, uh, and notice of this hearing was published uh, on this matter. This application was published June 13th and June 20th, 2024. Um, and- um, I think you're searching for 350-9.3A7. Thank you. Yep, I found, thank you. I know I'm seeing it now. Thank you very much. So yeah, uh, the standard. Uh, this is this this uh, uh, application is governed by as as you've said three fifty nine point three eight seven. So we can go ahead. I think uh, prior uh, to that, David, I yes. need to say that I received a postcard notifying me of as a, as an abutter. Um, oh. In fact, I'm two and a half blocks away. I have no idea. I and today I drove by to see how close it was. Had no idea where this house was. I do not consider it a problem, but if anybody wants me to recuse myself, I am happy to do so. Well, yeah, a butter doesn't mean that your property, correct me if I'm wrong, Nathan, directly abuts the applicant's property. It's within a certain amount of feet, is it not, Nathan? It's both. Um, yeah, we clarify this. So um, it's a butters, a butters, a butters, and um, people directly across the street within 300 feet but just because if you're multiple houses away from the property, that even if you're within 300 feet, doesn't mean you are a party of interest. So that was the, um, our city software has some limitations. It's not smart enough to um, correctly pick out the abutters by state law. That's why we send out a, a broad oh. notice to people within 300 feet. So just because you get a postcard doesn't mean it always, is, it does, it's not guaranteed or sure, guaranteed, um, it's not a guarantee that you are a, a, a relevant or butter or butter or butters. And in this case, and I can share the, the assessor's map too, um, to clarify, but um, Sherry's house happened to be um, multiple houses over, like three Sherry or four. Is not yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's not a party. Uh, she's not a party of interest. Okay, good. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, the clarification, because just today I, I thought this was so unusual and interesting because I knew it was two and a half blocks away. I mean, not even vaguely close. I actually drove from there to my son's house. It's not even my house. And it was 1,056 feet. I measured it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, so, maybe uh, if there was a drone that went from one corner to one corner, you might get 300 feet, but otherwise, no. Okay. So that means that, uh, Sherry, you, uh, I think it means you are welcome to participate fully in this because you are not technically in a butter, even though you got a postcard. Good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I will ask the applicant or their representative to uh, just give us a brief overview of the request being made for, um, and uh, 
we'll go from there. Uh, and again, please, if you could give us your name and address for the record that's being kept. Sure. My name's Gregor Tolson Wimmer, um, and it's 27 Woodbine Avenue, Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, and so we have a side porch that is currently the um, entrance that we use to the house that we would like to enclose um, and, you know, add on to, well, yeah, we'd like to enclose and then we'd like to add a mudroom um, to the back of the house so that the main entrance is a little bit closer to our driveway. If you look at the site plan, uh, we have to cross our entire yard to get to our entrance right now. Um, okay. So that's what we're hoping to do. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just ask if members have questions to start with. So the reason this comes before us is because the current uh, porch that you're now using as your entrance from your driveway is a is closer to the adjacent lot than right. follows current code. So your um, remodeling of this and closing it in won't bring it any closer. It It'll will not bring any closer. Make it more enclosed and yeah. although it looks closer than five feet to the line it's it's because you've got that privet hedge right and the right. line is beyond that yeah and yeah, the privet is quite wide <laughs> yeah they get that way and uh what i think i inferred after re reviewing things is that you're not going to keep that others that set of stairs from the porch that's going to become a window so that won't right. be another entrance way. So right. yeah, the no, foot traffic no. will move from that close to five foot line to further away. Correct. Okay. I got it right. <laughs> that was a great summary, Maureen. That was yeah, excellent. So, Thank so there's there's no additional non-conforming anything, right? It's just no. it's gonna be yeah. So I, I don't have any questions. Okay. I, I, know, I know because of the circumstances you need to come before the zoning board, but um, it doesn't seem to me that there's any problem. And Nathan, are there any comments by DPW or anybody or the city or anywhere else? No, there were no comments from DPW. Okay. And members of the public? Is there anyone? Or, Has well, anybody written in? You know? Let me double check. I'm uh, I, my memory is a little fuzzy. Let me just I must should have I've been getting so many public comments about another project. I'm getting a little bit. Yeah, there was uh yes, there was a zero zero public comment, not a single call, no letters about this particular project, no public comments. Okay. And I assume you've talked to neighbors and they're all fine with it. They are very fine with it. Yes. Okay. Is there any? I'm going to ask now if there's any or if there are any members of the public uh, present now who would like to comment or ask questions about this application? Or are we seeing anyone, Nathan? No, everybody else are applicants okay. for, and um, unless, uh, I, mean, I know Francisco was here for another hearing. Um, Francisco, please raise your hand if you want to comment on this particular one. Okay, um, okay. no okay. hand raised. Public comments. Um, uh, I think the staff had a question to clarify, and that is how the location of the egress doors will change. Um, is could the applicant address that question? Yeah. Um, I mean, so currently the the door that we use is facing our neighbor's property. Um, and the new door will, so the, it's going to be a mudroom where you walk in, which is a, about the door that you walk in will be about midway um, on the back uh, wall of the house. Um, and then inter on the interior side, uh, the door will be at the far, like close to the far wall. Um, so close to where the porch is now, but the traffic will be from the middle of the going into the house at the middle of the back wall. If okay. that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Helpful. So okay. Um if I guess I'll ask the board if if we have no uh, more questions uh for the applicant, we could entertain a motion to close the public hearing and then after that a motion on the uh, request for the findings. I'll move to close the public hearing. 
Okay, yes. do we have a second? Second. Okay. okay. Uh, so we need a uh, roll call vote, please, on the motion to close the public hearing on the Woodbine Avenue application. Mm -hmm. By roll call, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. Um, so now um, we can have discussion before or after if uh, a motion if we think it's necessary, but do we want to, does somebody want to uh, put uh, a motion forward on the request for the finding? I'm happy to do that. I, I move that we approve the uh, application to enclose a side porch and a rear mudroom um, by Greg Miles Tolson Wimmer at 27 Woodbine Ave, map ID 25A-156. Okay, and do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, um, and just discussion, I'll point out that I've I'll ask the board to confirm that I think we all agree that the proposed changes in our view will not subst be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming conditions. Uh, that is the standard we're required to apply and, and in approving the request, uh, that, is the that is the determination or the finding that we're making. Uh, so is there any other discussion or, or should we just have a roll call vote on the motion as presented? I, I would add the comment that the proposed changes will actually be less detrimental to right. the neighborhood. Right. Thank you. Yep. Right. Good. Um, um, Maureen, would you would you want to like you know briefly list, list out your rationale? I just for the yes, minutes. the um, egress is further is now is now going to be further away from the all, the five foot setback. Um, and we'll now move to what is no what is not non-conforming to a not no, <laughs> to a conforming setback, which I consider an improvement. Good, thank you. Uh, so, uh, if we're ready, we can have a roll call vote on the motion. Okay, by roll call, David. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. And Maureen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's unanimous. Um, and uh, again, I'll I'll let the I'll direct the applicant to Nathan's office for further guidance on the process and procedures going forward um, in terms of next steps. Um, uh, unless you have questions for us about that, but uh, I think I'm all set. Thank you so good, much. Good. Thank good you. Luck. Good luck with the project. <laughs> Thank you. Take bye care. Bye bye. Bye. So um, that brings us to the third item on the agenda, the one where I uh, am not able to participate. So what I think I'll do is just turn off my camera and mute, but I'll, I'll, I won't participate, but I'll hear you in the background. So once this uh, matter is, is resolved, um, I'll come back for the remaining business of the board, the, the minutes of meetings and the um, uh, uh, determination of the next hearing dates. Sounds okay. good. Thanks, David. Thank I know. Thank you. I'll okay. hand the gavel uh, uh, virtually to Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so, thanks. All right. So we have a hearing for uh, ZBA finding permit to remove two non-conforming curb cuts and move one to a different location on the property uh, by DC Coffee at 5 Fulton Ave, map ID 39A-030. The hearing publication dates for this were uh, June 13 and June 20th, 2024. Um, we are uh, looking at a simple majority vote of two out of three members. And uh, the standard for our determination is that the board needs to determine that the proposed changes will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming conditions. Um, and so I will hear from the applicants, but I, I do wanna just say before we begin that uh, we understand that this matter is also before the planning board and that there are several more complicated issues that they will be dealing with. We only have this one particular limited issue. And I think we need to make this determination before this this issue and others can go before the planning board, um, or at least this issue can go before the planning board. So if I could ask folks to limit their 
comments um, and narratives to just the curb cut issue. Um, we'd be grateful for that. Okay, so who is gonna be making the presentation for the applicant here? And if you could Hi, identify I'm yourself and your address, yeah. Sure. Hi, I'm Elon Tierney. I'm president of Key and Riddle Architects in Amherst, and I'm joined by Rachel Laffler from Berkshire Design Group. Um, right here in Northampton, we're just down the road from Town Hall, City Hall. Um, we're representing Bruce Voles, the owner of the property, and I think he's just stepping into the conference room right now. Uh, if it's okay, before we jump into the details, I just wanted to give you a little background on the project, or would you prefer to just focus on the curb cuts? Uh, sure, that's fine. I mean, I think you can assume that we've read the uh, materials that you've presented and we have a general overview, but if you wanna take a couple moments to do that, that'd be fine. Okay, great. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm a Northampton resident. I was actually born here. Uh, I came back to Northampton because it's a really special place. Um, we have a great downtown filled with a variety of small shops, art galleries, restaurants, and performance venues. Uh, it's why our town is a draw to visitors, and um, many of them come into town right off of 91, up Pleasant Street or Con Street, um, and some of them stay at the hotels that are adjacent to this project. It's a very high traffic and very visible location, um, and it's a gateway to our city. Another reason that I really love Northampton, um, and I believe many of my fellow residents love it too, uh, is the city's commitment to sustainability. Um, as a community, we are always pushing to do what we can to be good citizens of this planet, to hopefully leave it in a better place than we found it, um, but that's increasingly harder to do. And it seems like we can't do it fast enough. This project is uh, Bruce's effort at trying to do his part, um, leaving the planet a better place by helping to make electric vehicle ownership a more viable option, uh, not only for the residents of Northampton, uh, but also for the many visitors that come to Northampton and to those who may be making a trip between New York City and Vermont and they need to get charged up. Uh, in the US, as you may be aware, transportation accounts for about 30% of total greenhouse gas emissions. Electric vehicles or EVs are crucial component of the strategy to mitigate global warming. EVs reduce greenhouse gas emissions, increase energy efficiency, and improve urban air quality. The lack of comprehensive and accessible EV charging infrastructure is a significant barrier uh, to the widespread adoption of electric vehicles. Addressing this issue requires coordinated efforts from the government, communities, and sometimes individuals. This will expand and enhance a charging network, making EV ownership more convenient and feasible for a broader range of consumers. So hopefully that introduction gives you some context about why this project is being proposed and why we believe that the project is in line with the city's commitment to sustainability and why this location is ideally suited for this project at one of our gateways to the city of Northampton. So with that, I'll go into the details um, and we're just gonna share our screen. So can everyone see the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is just a slide showing context. Um, the proposed property is in the center. It was the former Pleasant Journey used car shop. Um, and I believe, well, I bought a few cars there. I'm, I'm guessing many people in Northampton did. Uh, to the right of it is the ProLube um, auto maintenance uh, facility. And below that is the car wash and the sheriff's office. Just south of the property is the Florence uh, Savings Bank um, ATM, and across Con Street are the two hotels. And then to the north of the property is, uh, is Netta. 
uh, just for some orientation. Um, this is what the property uh, used to look like when it was Pleasant Journey. You can see one of the curb cuts onto, well, actually, you can see both of the curb cuts onto Cotton Street. Uh, the cars were parked right up very close to, um, well, they were parked up to the property line. That strip of green is actually city property. And then on Con Street, the cars were parked right up to the, um, the, the property line and the sidewalk. So uh, this is a, a diagram and you'll see a clearer diagram in a minute, just showing the four curb cuts, uh, two on Fulton Street and two on Con Street. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel. Thanks, Ayla. Um, as Alan mentioned, um, this is a view, this is a survey that we had of the project when we started. So to orient you now, the plans have rotated a little bit. Um, this is Pleasant Street on the top of the page. Um, the car wash area is across the street. Netta is here. Fulton Ave is over here. This is Con Street. The Florence Bank ATM is here, and the roundabout is down on this way. Um, so today, so the site in its existing condition has four curb cuts. Um, all of them are within within 30 feet of an intersection or another driveway, which is non-conforming. Um, curb cut A and curb cut B have frontage onto Fulton Ave and are very close to the intersection. Um, curb cut C is off of Pleasant Street and curb cut D is within, within a little, a little over 20 feet from the Florence Stadium's parking lot. Um, so, so then in the proposed condition again, so this is Pleasant Street, Florence Bank, ATM is over here, Netta is here, this is Cons, this is Fulton, this is Pleasant. We're gonna shrink curb cut D, make it conforming in size to be 22 feet in, in width, um, which helps us get a little bit further away from the Florence Bank. Uh, area. And then we will be introducing a new curb cut E off of Con Street and eliminating A and A, A B and C along this side. Um, so this is an improvement over the existing conditions in that the, the entry and egress from the parking lot is further away from the intersection of Fulton Ave and Cons and Pleasant Streets. Um, and then we are we are within that 50 feet. Um, we're asking for finding we're sort of within 50 feet of the Florence Bank parking entry and egress. Which is why you still need our permission, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we're that's why we're here today. Great. Thanks. That was very helpful. Thank you. Um are there any other people who would like to speak on behalf of the proposed changes? I see that there were some other people here. So Nathan, is there anybody looking? I can't see if there are hands up or not. They're from this side. I think Francisco's on the call, but he's probably team. I, I, I'm, ta I'm first now talking about the presentation on behalf of the request for this change. Um, uh, we we if you're in opposition to it, we will be getting to you separately. Um, but Nathan, are there any more people who would like to speak on behalf of the applicant right yeah, now? Yeah, now I don't see any hands raised. But uh, I think Francisco, if you are well, you want to make a public comment, there will be a chance later. But if you are here with the applicant to present this proposal, uh, if you're part of the applicant party, you can speak now um, if you want to raise your hand. And if you want to make a public comment later, there will be a time for that. I just want to clarify. Uh, Francisco is part of Kuhn Riddle. He's part of the design team. Oh. He doesn't have any, any further comments. This is the presentation. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. I'll, I'll make. I didn't realize he was part of the Kuhn Riddle. I'll make him co-host then. Um, I thought he was here as a general member of the public. Sorry. Um, okay. He's just listening to hear how it goes. Okay. I, I made him co-host just in case. Thank you. Okay. So, um, are there any questions of the board to the applicant or the team? Just a 
preliminary question on uh, directional traffic. Do you do you consider is your proposal that both of these curb cuts, one being uh, adjusted from an existing curb cut and one being a new curb cut onto a street that prior prior to this did not have a curb cut, are you envisioning those both as two way traffic? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, we think we think that traffic will sort of self-select also um, turning right or turning left. Um, Pleasant Street does have the roundabout and Cot Street does have the roundabout. Um, and so anyone leaving the site, if they are finding that it's hard to make a left, they could take a right um, using, using the roundabout to, to get out. Um, and the same, the same for Cot Street. Someone could, if they were having a hard time making a left, they could take a right and work, work their way around. We think it's important um, to have two-way traffic on both sides. Um, that allows for access to the EV charging station, EV, EV charging stations of which there are 10 proposed right now. Um, and I, I think it would become, it could become a bit of a, a challenge if it was a parking lot that was a, a head end dead end parking lot. Um, and if it what, were- Excuse me, can you clarify that of what parking lot? So if, if there was not a curb cut access, if this mm -hmm. was not here, um, it would be a dead end parking lot and that um, if this were full, it would be more challenging to maneuver and navigate. Uh, if, if this parking lot were full, you might have a lot of conflicts with cars getting in and out of the parking area. So I, I do want to clarify this further because I have to be honest, the idea of two-way traffic going in and out of Pleasant Street. I don't know if you've had a traffic analysis or if that's part of this, but I can see a lot of accidents there. Um, so I'm not saying that one should be a dead end, but couldn't you make it so you go in one side and out the other? I mean, so it's a one-way directional. Does that make sense to you? I, I mean, right. the idea of people pulling out on Pleasant Street from that in both directions just right. seems like an accident waiting to happen to me. I think part of uh, my feeling about it was that um, for people who live in Northampton, I think this becomes fairly logical in terms of getting in and out of it. If it was just one way, um, my concern would be if this is people coming from out of town, it could be really confusing in terms of how to access this. And I, I think in terms of the traffic patterns, um, you know, that area is, it is busy, uh, which helps in terms of the site, but it also has uh, sort of the rush hour traffic of the morning and the uh, late afternoon. And other than that period, I, I don't think it would be too problematic to have it going both ways. Oh, well, then you don't live on that street like I do then. No, that I don't be live on that it will be problematic. Right. One could use the same. I appreciate, uh, Rachel, your explanation because I hadn't thought of, about the possibility of it actually assisting people if they can't make a left hand turn coming out of coming onto Pleasant Street that they might take a right hand turn and go around the roundabout should they, you know, think that way. Um, but I'm curious if you have the dimension, the distance from both of those curb cuts to the roundabout itself? Don't have offhand, but I could um, queue up a uh, Google Earth and make a measurement. I mean, they're I, pretty I cool. think they're in our materials, aren't they? I, I believe they are. What with the, with the remaining, the- Like how much of that, that little the parcel intersection. of Lawrence Bank owns, you know, we're already cutting the 50 feet limit uh, by, you know, uh, measurable distance, the 50 feet maximum uh, minimum requirement down to 30 in one place and 20 something in one place, if I've got that right. So I am curious about how close, well, this helps, this helps. So 
So one of the one of the decisions that's been made is to remove the curve cuts from Fulton Ave. Um, is that because it's a uh, residential, quote, residential street and the curbs cuts were facing uh, residences? Is that some of the thinking about removing those? No, the, the reason those are removed is because the building is um, facing Fulton Street and the length of it would not allow for a curb cut to safely go around the building. I right. see. Okay. The, the proposed building. The building the proposed as proposed, building. I mean. Right, right, correct. Was there another question in there, Maureen? Sherry asked, and I, oh, I'm not sorry, sure sorry. this is the right place in our um, meeting protocol, but Sherry asked a question that I would pose back to Nathan uh, and or the um, applicants about uh, traffic, traffic studies in relation to these proposed changes. Can, um, since this is the state, the place where we, ask questions to the applicants. Do you have any traffic data or have you done any traffic impact serve, uh, studies on this? Yes, we, we did an initial a look at um, the ITE trip reports based upon use and change in use. Um, and one of, the, one of the challenges of quantifying the proposed use of the project is that at this point in time, we do not have a tenant for the spaces and the IT is tied towards what the tenant use is. So for example, there's a difference between if you have a cafe or if you have a sit down restaurant with takeout or if you have a sit down restaurant. Um, currently the project envisions two, two eating type spaces with a takeaway area in the middle. Um, and based upon you know, the very different numbers for each of those, but when we look at the comparison of the traffic um, traffic counts in in North Pleasant, um, it is is a couple orders of magnitude less. So the impact in terms of this project adding traffic to Pleasant Street and Con Street is negligible. But I understand that's not the question you're asking. Um, but in terms of that context, that this will have a small, very small. Um, impact on traffic on Pleasant and Con Streets. Nathan. I don't no. think, I'm sorry, I don't think I was asking about numbers of cars as much as the impact, just like that traffic circle was put in to mitigate the traffic situation in such a way that, you know, cars were less likely to be hit pedestrians, we have a lot of problems with pedestrians being hit. Um, has that been analyzed? What being able to pull out left and right on Pleasant Street is going to do? Not numbers of cars. And I, I'm, I'm curious, I have a, a question about other the other adjacent properties and if those are also limited to right turn only or left turn only? Like the hotels and the we're, we're not really considering that right now. So. Yeah, plus they're not on Pleasant Street. Well, even if they were, that's not yeah. what we're yeah. looking at right now. Yeah. Right. And that's that's easily obtained if you have that in if you have an interest in knowing that. I know Florence Bank from Con Street, you can enter and exit, but onto Pleasant Street, you can't exit. Right. Okay. One other question, and this is really for Nathan. I just want to understand what we're working with here. Um, if all we're looking at is the curb cuts and they still haven't finished with the planning board, is it possible that we're voting on something that might be completely changed after the planning board? Uh, possibly. Um, okay. th that would not be the first time a, a, a significant amendment occurred because of a planning board feedback or something has been continued. Um, I, every project is different. Um, I think so right now the uh, uh, zoning board is looking at the current proposed plan with these two curve cuts as indicated. Um, if And the planning board is 
um, you know, planning board for them to approve this uh, this curb cut change as proposed. They also need the zoning board findings permit. Um, but of course, uh, even if you approve this particular curb cut proposal, if the, if the very same curb cut proposal goes to the planning board and the planning board has some concerns uh, or, you know, the applicant or the planning board request basically if some amendment occurs that's different from this current proposal um yeah that, that yeah um that that i wouldn't i mean every case is different but that's not that's you know that has happened in the past so okay um, yeah and procedurally are there criteria the planning board will consider specific to the curb cuts that are different than what we would consider yeah, so normally curb cut, um, second curb cut approvals are under the jurisdiction of the planning board, either as a part of a special permit for, for standalone curb cut application or as an overall part of a site plan um, application approval. And I mean, I can bring up their language about the second curb cut, um, but they actually have some specific language about that. Uh, and of course, so when the planning board is looking at approving the second curb cut, uh, they will be considering those criteria. If you give me one second. Um, Yeah, so so it's it's under um, zoning ordinance eight point eight G. Um, the planning board may only issue a second curb cut if the applicant can show that there is something unique about the property that would otherwise render flow to and from the property unsafe and unmanageable. If the board finds that more than one curb cut is necessary for traffic safety purposes, then additional off-site traffic mitigation may be required by the planning board to address pedestrian safety within the abutting street network. Um, and in all other districts, the planning board may, as part of a site plan approval, allow additional driveway or curb cuts if and only if such permit will promote and improve tra safe and efficient traffic circulation. So they're they're charged with looking at the traffic patterns in their determination of that. So I, I guess the question that I hear Maureen and Sherry raising is, does the zoning board need to make a determination before the planning board can get to that determination that you just referred to in the ordinance? Um, is that a prerequisite for the planning board to consider it? Um, Elizabeth, sorry, uh, were you asking the question to me or to the board? Yes. No, I wasn't oh. asking a question of you. So I think what I heard Sherry and Maureen asking was whether the zoning board needed to make a determination before the zone, before the planning board would even get to this. Um, and it, I, I'm thinking that we probably do if we, you know, before they can look at traffic patterns, they need to know where the curb cuts will be. So um, it seems to me that we may need to be making this determination, but I, I guess if you could clarify that, um, it would be helpful. Right, um, and actually, um, my, I'll reach out to Carolyn. Um, sorry, sorry, Elizabeth, could you iterate your question again? Sure, um, and Maureen and, and Sherry ask me, uh, uh, jump in if, if I'm representing you're doing, this you're, properly. You're reflecting you're doing my sentiment, okay. yes. I, the question is whether the zoning board needs to make a determination before the planning board can reach the determination with respect to the traffic patterns that you just indicated they will need to make a determination on under 8.8G. Uh, okay, understood, okay. Or does, I'm not, I'm not sure they're asking to put it off, but could the zoning board put it off if that was its determination and the planning board go forward and then come back to the zoning board for once once the planning board makes, makes a determination around traffic patterns, could it then come back to the zoning board for approval you know, of the proposal or any altered proposal at that point? Yeah, Sherry's question poses the 
idea poses that thought of the order this is proceeding in it it doesn't feel quite purposeful right it seems to me that we don't know if the plans will be altered after the planning board votes on this and well i if i can interrupt of, sherry yeah. i think that there's a different way of are looking at it as a board mm -hmm. and that is not whether the curb cuts will that give rise to different traffic patterns are our purview, but whether the location of them, irrespective of whether it's one or two way traffic coming out of them, but whether the location of the proposed ones as a, and the, the removal of the, of the two, and then the shrinkage of the one and the other new one, whether separate the apart from of them yes just the location key, right just the location not the traffic whether pattern that's going in and out of not. them because i think that from what nathan just read that's the purview of the the planning board and right. what we're looking at is just there is a distance issue between you know the curb cuts and the intersections or the curb cuts and the businesses or the residential so i think we're limited to just that and we're not giving permission either way or putting restrictions on either way i don't think we would have the ability to do that to give permission for which way the traffic would go i think we could you know we, we could just be looking at where its placements are where those placements are but that's my our mission is to look at whether something is more detrimental or not and it's if but detrimental yeah, if right. the placement is detrimental, and I mean, you can't separate those things. Well, um, yeah. I, I'm not sure. I mean, Nathan, what, what's your take on this, I guess, is our question. Are we, what's our, what's our task here? What's our order? You know, are we looking at just the placement of these curb cuts without regard to traffic? And that's under the purview of the planning board um, for them to decide. And are we asking to be, are we being asked to make this decision sort of in its vacuum, you know, just the, just these curb cuts or, you know, do we need to be looking at something more? I think mainly it's the relative location compared to the existing conditions. So the findings is you're looking at, you know, whether the proposed changes are substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing conditions. So, and you know, so again, you know, um, yeah, so that, I mean, the traffic pattern, substantial, what does substantially more detrimental mean? I mean, even though the primary purview of this is in the planning board, zoning board can consider various factors. And I think, you know, um, some of the, some of the, you know, some of the points I raised in the, in the report uh, or staff report, I, I'm, I'm under maybe I sort of introduced confusion, but I think, you know, you want to maybe one way to look at it is compare the location of the proposed changes to the existing change, existing conditions, and see if it is more substantially more detrimental or not. And of course, you know, you can, you, you know, traffic safety is def, you know, it could be a, a factor for you to make that determination, you know, and you can maybe, you know, I think comparing it is one way to frame it. And, you know, you're not giving a blank application a permit for any kind of curb cut plus anywhere you are only permitting for this very specific um you know it's very specific location and if after this if the planning board or if they the applicant changes the location of the curb cut my understanding is they'll have to come back again for a, a, a on another another permit of this type if it still has this type of non-conformity so I'm I'm reading the staff decision recommendation right here in front of us. Right, right. One is verify the rationale for having two curb cuts instead of just one. And number two is verify the traffic flow of the proposed curb cuts, i.e. two directional or one directional. That's a staff recommendation. And number three is verify that the proposed changes are safer than the existing conditions. That's what we've been tasked to do. Right. And the second condition, second point, um, 
I, I was just uh, more putting that as a, a factual check. You just want to get a full view of how this is going to uh, operate. Um, and perhaps uh, I might have um, said excessively, um, but so um, I think one way to mainly frame this is whether you want to compare it, you know, you want to do a comparison of this change. You know, do you, do you see this positional change as being more detrimental than the existing condition of the four carb cuts on that location. So you know, rather than saying in a blanket vacuum saying, oh, these carb cuts are dangerous, you want to make the comparison. Is it more detrimental or less detrimental or substantially more detrimental than uh, the current conditions? So thank you for that. Nathan, I do. Um, I did note that you have inquired with the DPW and you have not heard back yet, correct? Right. Yeah. They, uh, it's still in open status. Let me just double check again. Um, and and yeah, Pleasant Street being uh, Route 5, does the state also um, have a stake in this? So yeah, Route 5 is state. Um, I can't say the details about that aspect, but I, my understanding is, yeah, Route 5 is state owned and managed. So um, there are some um, state, I guess, some state um, jurisdiction to that come into play, possibly. Yeah, I thought that affect our decisions today, right? I mean, I do, I do um, we're still at the phase where we're having a discussion in case we need to bring in the applicant to ask questions, correct? We haven't closed that part. That's correct. And we haven't right. heard if there are any um, opposition comments either. Okay. Yeah. So I would comment, and uh, actually the applicant can comment on this, please. As far as I know, when Pleasant Auto, whatever it was called, uh, was there, the two curb cuts on Pleasant Street were not used at all. Is that correct? Uh, I think I think the one closest to Fulton Street was used. Okay, but not the one that was closer to. No, as you, as you can see, the, the cars are parked there. Right. Yeah. I, I, it could be used if the cars weren't parked there. <laughs> right, but they weren't. It wasn't. And the two on Fulton Street were definitely used. Yes, I, I realize that. I don't believe I have any further questions for the applicants. Do you, Sherry? Well, I guess not. Um, I we'll guess have, not. No. We'll have time for a discussion yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, later in the course of yeah. the hearing. All right. Um, Applicant, are there any, is there anyone else who wanted to weigh in on this on your behalf at this point? Okay, not hearing anything. Are there, is there anyone at this hearing who wanted to speak in opposition to this? Nathan? Nobody, uh, please, um, there is nobody else in the hearing and uh, there were no, um, written comments at all for this project either, similar to many other applications, surprisingly, or okay. maybe not surprisingly. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so if we don't have any more questions for the applicant, and I guess I just want to double check that, or if there's nothing else the applicant wants to say, I, I think we could entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Right. Does the applicant have anything further they'd like to say based on this prior stretch of discussion? Um, I will say that we did consider um, traffic flow and uh, as Bruce mentioned, considering both people coming from the center of town and people coming off of 91 and giving folks options, um, we felt was safer. Um, so, that, that was our professional opinion. Hmm. Uh, actually, there is one question I do have for the applicant. 
I just want to make sure, given that we're talking about this curb cut with the building behind, in, you know, this is not a drive through. No, it is not. No. Okay. It's so people would come and, and uh, charge their vehicles for anywhere from probably 20 to 30 minutes. 30 to 60 minutes. So right. the idea is that the commercial space is a place where they can yeah. grab a cup of coffee or pizza or whatever. Um, so yeah, cars would be parked there for a period of time, but also allowing for people who may not be charging their cars to come and visit the commercial spaces as well. And we did make it very pedestrian friendly so that uh, people from the hotels uh, could use the crosswalks and come uh, to the commercial spaces and, and clear separation between vehicles and pedestrians was really important. So back to the, um, and I understand your conundrum about not feeling like you have can develop numbers for traffic without knowing uh, the specifics about the occupants of those of uh, the space. But even if you had developed data based on the charger stations, the anticipated, you know, uh, optimal use of charger stations, that's really who that business, that building is aimed for. There's only nine other spots for other traffic. So, I mean, I feel like like that data would be meaningful, would have been meaningful to bring in, even based on the um, expectation of average or um, intended, like anticipated use of the chargers. Because I mean, I think it's a great concept. What you're proposing is a great concept, but the tr it it seems to me based on the charging stations and that getting that data would would ha would provide meaningful information about what the impact of uh, traffic would be at those two. Those uh, two that's, I, I think that that's understandable, but unfortunately there are very limited, um, I don't think that there's information yet available for that. I right. think Rachel's team did try to look mm -hmm. for that and it's because it's such a new uh, thing. Oh, there aren't many stations like this, which is part of why we're trying to do this. <laughs> yeah, it's not yet it's not yet quantified in the ITE manual for, for calculation. So everything that we would be doing would be based upon um, projections. If, if I could uh, speak to that, um, I've been working with the charging company because that's a concern of mine that in order for this to work, the chargers need to generate some revenue and they gave me a spreadsheet based on usage. So if there's 10 chargers, they predict the first year, the usage would be about 4%. So I don't know in terms of the math of how many times that is. I actually hope for more than that. But over a period of um, 8 to 10 years, they ramped up the charger usage to 18%. So it's not like this is, you know, hopefully this will encourage the more EV purchases. Um, but for now, the usage is pretty low. If you drive by the uh, Tesla supercharger station over in Hadley, and it's rare that there's very many cars there. So I don't think this is going to be a heavy use, certainly in the first few years. And the fact that you know, you do have to be there for 30 to 60 minutes. It's not the same as going to a gas station and filling up in five minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I do. This is completely separate, but I want to give you kudos for doing this because um, I just recently bought a new car and refused to buy an electric car because I said there aren't enough charging stations yet in, in uh, New England. Mm -hmm. So um, I give you kudos for trying to do this. Well, thank you. It's been quite the endeavor. And I mean, one thing is um, this is not a major site plan project, so it didn't require as detailed of a trip um, data as required for major site plan project. Um, so um, I, I know this is a unique uh, project with these different um, compli uh, complexities, but yeah. Um, that's that's one one detail about the the application process
And we did go through a long process of trying different scenarios in terms of locating the building, locating where the chargers went. And after several variations, this came down to making the most sense in terms of being able to mm -hmm. utilize a really tight site. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Were there any other? I, just I, make sure I do have get one question, questions. and I think it's probably not in our purview, um, but I do want to at least ask it of the applicants. Um, since their idea is that it would, based on traffic flow, would be easier, let's say, when you're on Pleasant Street to make a right turn and go around the rotary, would it be possible to just put up a sign saying right turn only? I mean, I don't think that's our purview in terms of looking at where the curb cuts would be, but it would certainly make me feel much more comfortable if that's the kind of thing you were willing to do. Well, if it's an make it or break it, <laughs> I guess yes. But, uh, you know, I certainly don't want to discourage anybody or give, make it problematic for anybody to find it. So. Yeah. I, I just personally know because I get off on what I still call exit 18 because it'll never be any different to me. Um, uh, and uh, I drive up and down that road probably five times a day. And I I have almost hit pedestrians a number of times when they step out from the Shell station or the Sheriff station or the or where the car wash is. I know that is a difficult area in terms of uh, traffic. Um, and I just kind of worry that one more crossing that street with cars that aren't paying attention uh, is just more trouble. That's all. Well, where those crosswalks are, it's almost more problematic for people taking a right turn because yeah, it is problematic. Yeah. If they're speeding up in order to get ahead of a car, I mean, the crosswalks are in a terrible place unless they have some other. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. That's, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah. We're not solving that at this meeting. <laughs> right. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, motion to close the public hearing. I'll move to close the public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. And by, by roll call, uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Okay, um, how about we make a motion? We, it can be amended if we need to, and then have discussion. Let's start with the motion. Um, can or you explain can have... that order, Elizabeth? Because well, I, I, I'm not sure what I would move. Okay, for... well, then I was just gonna say, thank you, if, if that's too um, uncertain right now, then I think that we could uh, have some discussion and then make a motion. One of my considerations is move to um, a hold on this decision until we hear from the DPW. There's I'm very concerned to say about making will, decisions though, right? without full uh, without that information. Nathan, do you think we will hear from the DPW or is it possible that their silence is, they, they just don't intend to file any comments? Um, it, it's a large, it's a, I mean, even though it's intermediate site plan project, it's still a significant project. And chances are that Carolyn might have a DPW feedback that she received that I didn't receive. So right now in the open guard permit system, there is a DPW review step that's still that's marked as in progress. So, um, I mean, if that is the, if the board wants to hold off on making this decision um, until DPW clarifies, um, I, um, I I think you know actually a couple of weeks ago there was a similar issue, or I mean, not a similar issue, but there was another pro a much larger project where DPW still hasn't offered its stormwater permit yet, so that project site plan hearing was continued to another month. So if if the board feels more comfortable um, having DPW's opinion about this proposed change, um, yes, I, I, I mean, um, 
I, I, you know, so I, I guess we'll need, I'll need to, I'll, you know, notify the planning board that, um, you know, the board, the zoning board feels more comfortable approving this. Um, and actually, um, the applicant has their hand up. Can we take input from the applicant at this point? Oh, right. We have closed. Did they close the public hearing? We have oh. closed the public hearing. Yes. So, so uh, let, let's see this part through. I guess my feeling is um, I'm leaning more towards strong concern about the con street curb cut and hearing from the dpw could resolve that you know i i that's i guess that's where i'm leaning right now as much as i'm in support of so much about this proposed project that's not our that's not in our purview it's not well, about that can you explain why you're concerned about the con street one because there are so many curb cuts in such a short span of time and soon to be another one when, well, not soon, but when what used to be the Gazette becomes another hotel, there's going to be a lot of additional in and out traffic approaching the roundabout from that direction, from Con Street, in mm -hmm. addition to now one more, one more um, hopefully very successful business coming from their Pleasant Street side. So I'm uh, I'm concerned about that. There has not been a, cur a curb cut on the Con Street stretch. This is new, and the Fulton uh, Avenue entrances were just kind of sleepier, right? I mean, they weren't people were not coming in and out of a major road. So, um, what does this? If we were to postpone this, Nathan, is there a planning board meeting scheduled for this? And what is what would a postponement here do to that meeting? Uh, um, right. Let me actually let me see if um, would you can I um, contact director? My understanding is so the hearing is scheduled for the planning board tonight at eight fifteen. So their approval of the plan as presented, including that um, curve cut change, is dependent on the ZBA's permit as well. Both are required basically. The you know so. Um, I think, I, I you know I guess uh, the planning board can consider various other aspects of the uh, of the mm -hmm. um, of the proposal this this uh, coming uh, coming at eight eight fifteen p.m. But um, I think for them to approve it actually in, to finally approve it, and if we decide to postpone it, they will have to subsequently postpone the, or continue their hearing. Um, let me, let me, uh, um, is it okay if I mute and uh, call? We, why don't we just take a five yeah. minute break and let yeah. you do that, yeah. okay? Yeah, How let's do that? that. Yeah, okay. thank you. Did Nate have been CC'd on the memo? No, I just went to Carolyn. Because Chris Baker is the DPW, right? The yeah. city engineer. So they person. gave us comments today. Yeah.
Hai. I calling Carolyn, but it went to voicemail, so I texted her. Um, Okay. yeah. Actually, their hearing is, uh, planning board hearing is starting at 7. And Sherry? Oh, yes. Are Are we back in meeting, Elizabeth? Um, I thought we were waiting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are, are you, do you expect to hear from Carolyn or not? Um, maybe let's give it a couple more minutes. Um, I think Okay. she might be just busy with the setting up the uh, other hearing. Um, and, you know, I think our five-minute break is still up. Uh, still there, still in place. So, yeah, maybe just a couple more minutes. Actually, I I just heard back from Carolyn. Oh, and I guess we're on break still. I think it's been five minutes, so I think we can go forward. Let's wait till we've got Sherry back. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hang we're, on one we're... second. Yeah. Sorry, I just got out my ice cream. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> it's dinner time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I think maybe to everyone's relief. Uh, so yeah, DPW, uh, according to Carolyn, um, decision uh, from her text, DPW is fine with it. I have comments from them for planning board. I think uh, it's just communication. It wasn't fully uploaded to the permit. Uh, process and I'm asked I asked her if she could email it to me I mean um, but yeah from her communication DPW is fine with the proposed okay. character changes so. all right I think that's useful mm -hmm. okay and and Sherry to more um, specifically mm -hmm. answer your good question um, my concerns about the con street as opposed to the pleasant street curb cuts are twofold one is that it's a new curb cut, whereas the Pleasant Street one exists. And it is um, not even 30 feet from the Florence Bank entrance. Mm -hmm. And so and it's Florence Bank's only entrance. They can't, um, well, how does it work? No, it's two way on that side. Mm -hmm. So on the Pleasant Street side, they can't exit there. But on that side, it's two way. And it's in our, um, you know, code is 50 feet. So that's that's quite close. So mm -hmm. I guess those are those were the two factors that posed that, made that curb cut yeah. as uh, to me in a different um, different level of concern than the Pleasant Street curb cut, which they've actually improved on. It's now further from mm -hmm. the, it now will be further from the Florence Bank entrance 
Um, yeah, I just know yeah. that the Pleasant Street curb cut wasn't used. So even though it's further, you know, it wasn't used at all before. Right. And now right. it's going to be used. So um, that being said, this is a very odd piece of property and they've packed a lot in here and, you know. And, and I guess I would just add that I, I put a lot of stake in DPW and mm -hmm. and the planning board. And so I feel comfortable going ahead with the this proposal um, because one, it's getting rid of it's reducing the number of curb cuts from four right. to two, which I think is a, is a, a mm -hmm. huge improvement. One of the remaining ones is going to be much smaller. Um, and so the only one that, you know, is going to be the new one is the con street. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, I hear all the, you know, your concerns mm -hmm. over there. Um, I, I have to say, you know, I've go in and out of con street a lot and I go in and out of pleasant street from, you know, I cut through right Ave, mm -hmm. and, you know, it may, and there's that, uh, bank ATM thing. It, it takes a couple of minutes sometimes but I, I don't have a problem. I've never had a problem getting out eventually. So I, I guess I just put a lot of stake in DPW and if they're okay with this and given that the planning board is going to be looking at traffic flow and patterns of these curb cuts, I, you know, and that we're, I, I understand and you were right, Sherry, what our, our, you know, charge was, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm feeling comfortable looking at this from DPW's perspective and the D, and the planning board having, a lot to come behind us. This is just a very preliminary kind of decision, which doesn't mean it's not important, but it is preliminary to so many other pieces that they're also going to be looking at, including the traffic flow. So, um, you know, for my, my two cents, I I'm feeling comfortable with this change. And I, and I do think it meets the standard of being less detrimental to the neighborhood. Yeah. And so despite my concerns about the traffic flow, um, you know, based on our standard, which is less detrimental to the neighborhood, I definitely think this is an improvement. And uh, and so, you know, although I do have concerns, you know, that's outside of, in my opinion, kind of my purview. And uh, this is clearly an improvement. I, I think it's less detrimental and I would agree with you on it. I guess the other thing that I might add in terms of less detrimental is you know, looking at the project as a whole, you know, we have some use of land that has remained unused for a long time. So I think that's a boon also. Well, the Pleasant uh, Auto just sold last year, I think. Um, yeah, maybe my years have all blended together, but, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think it was fairly recent. Uh, I kind of feel like it was longer than that, but whatever, the, it's still stagnant now. And to have something that yeah. could be put to use there, that is going to be worthwhile. And and have having an EV myself, I think it's a great thing to have. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so um, Maury, did you want to say anything else or can we proceed with a motion? Do you think? I think we can proceed with a motion. All I would say is um, to, you know, to remind ourselves, we're not voting on um, our approval of the project. We're voting specifically on the curb cuts. Right. And, and I think I will weigh in as well to say how much I applaud this this venture to make something really positive out of a very odd, tiny, tight little space. Um, but that that's not what we're here to review. So that's all. And it's not that um, we're also here not to vote to say that it's less detrimental. It's it's will it be more detrimental to the neighborhood? So I think we need to keep those parameters in mind. Yeah, there is a distinction. That's true. All right, motion. I don't know how to say it, so I'll let one of you do it. <laughs> okay, so that sure. means me. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, I move that we vote to uh, approve a ZBA findings permit to remove two non-conforming curb cuts and move one to a different location on the property by DC Coffee at 5 Fulton Ave, map ID 39A-030. Uh, discretionary permit, simple majority vote required, two of three members. 
the board needs to determine that the proposed changes will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming conditions. Uh, what else do we need? The applicable code sections? No, I think we're good. Thanks. I think we're good. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion before a roll call? Okay. Uh, Nathan, could you do a roll call? Yes. By roll call, um, Elizabeth? Yes. Uh, Maureen? N no. Okay, no. And Sherry? Yes. Okay. So two out of three. Okay. So good luck with this project tonight and the planning board. And uh, I think that will wrap up that hearing. We do have some minutes to consider and then some scheduling, but congratulations and good luck tonight. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Okay. Good luck with the project. I'm back. Okay. Oh, yes. Take it over. Take it away, David. Uh, oh, I never want your job again. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you're welcome to wrap this up and I'll just um okay. So I well, I think the only things left are uh two sets of minutes to approve. Maybe we can vote on those together. And then just to figure out what the summer schedule is going to be. Um, so the minutes, do people, did people have a chance to look at the minutes? I yes. did. Yeah. yeah. I was mm -hmm. not present for the one that uh, Sarah and Sherry were at, but I, I yeah, still need to accept both of them. Both yeah, of them I was only it. present at one of them and it was seemed accurate. Okay. So do we have a motion to just approve uh, both yes. sets of minutes? I think yeah. we can do it all in one motion. Yes, motion to approve both okay. sets of minutes. A second? Second. Okay, uh, roll call vote, please. Yes, by roll call, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. So that's unanimous, those are approved. Um, yes. So what happens just pro procedurally, um, Sherry was the only one here able to attend that so can does she vote on those minutes no i don't think it's i don't think well, you have to have been at the what. meeting to <laughs> approve the minutes right she could no have one she of us has objections yeah. to the minutes including the people who were there mm -hmm. does that seem right nathan yeah i will double check but uh, you don't have to be present to approve minutes necessarily right. yeah. not, si since we have somebody here who was here at at least one of each of those right. that person you know, where it hasn't objected, right? Right, right. Thank you. I think that makes sense. I'm kind of making that it up. Does. I think it, it makes does. sense. And we were given the minutes in enough advance that we could have let Nathan know if we had any amendments to it or proposed changes. Right, right. Okay. And, and if, in fact, that isn't correct and Carolyn said yes, because I was there, I approve it. So either <laughs> okay, way. Okay. <laughs> I approve this message. <laughs> Great. Um, and then the last thing I think is just uh, we. It sounds like we uh, of of the possible summer dates. Um, and Nathan, you'll confirm what we're talking about in July and August. We only we never had four people. We only had three people in the survey available for each of the dates. Is that was that the issue, Nathan? So yeah, we had three out of four members for every one of those the four dates. Let me open it up and I'll screen share so we are clear. Um, now there were four people available on July 11th. It looks like. Oh, oh, actually, uh, so one of the there's five people listed. One of them is me. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I I create a doodle poll. So oh, ignore the that. top person. Ignore the top person. That's me. Let me just let me share oh, my screen. Yeah. yeah. So. This is actually use you know this is the view as me having created the uh, doodle poll so it might look a little bit different but yeah if you see it one thing to consider is we do have an um we do have an application that arrived relatively recently so they cannot be on the July 11th hearing they have to be on July 25th or later it's another it's actually it's actually a special permit hearing for um, converting a carport that's non-conforming into a living area. 
because carports and garages are allowed to have a much narrower setbacks or five feet less uh, narrower setbacks than standard living space. Right now, it was non-conforming at a lesser degree, but if they're converting to living area, it becomes more, uh, it becomes a new zoning violation and uh, they need to get a special permit with unanimous votes. So the, it can only happen July 25th or later. So, you know, I guess the, that's one factor for the board to consider. And there might be a special permit for us business. They call me to say they're writing the application, but they haven't submitted anything. But that might come down sometime later. But uh, right now, the one there's one special permit hearing that can happen on July 25th or later. I'd um, like to wait until August if we can on that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm out of out of state the 25th. When we get to August, I'm going to look at my calendar again because I have a feeling I might be available the 22nd of August. I I thought I'm going to look right now, but let's do July. If 1st. you if you are, yeah, I just assume wait for you, David. If for when you can be there. Um, okay, but run these but, meetings. <laughs> but the 11th. Uh, We'll only have three people. Is that of July? Sounds like that's a, a problem. Well, no, it just won't be um, uh, not enough advance notice, right? Yeah. So right, July maybe. 11, yeah, July 11 cannot happen. Not enough advance notice. Okay. But July 20, July 25th, 25th and later, we have enough. Uh, no, no, we have enough time for notice. But on July 25th, uh, David is missing, and on August 8th, Maureen is missing. And actually, on August 22nd, uh, two members, David and Sherry, are missing. So David's saying he might be able to. Yeah, I, I'm trying to 22nd. remember why. Because for me, I, in August, the 22nd would probably be better than the 8th. But I, I, I could do that. But um, Nathan, is there anything in other than that that we'd hear on July 11th? Uh, there's, there's no need to meet on July 11th. Okay. So let's, let's yeah. just kill July 11th uh -huh. and then okay. look at. So I, I could potentially be available on the 8th. I would have to zoom in from somewhere else. Um, well, we, we do have the three of us already, Maureen. So okay. when you're on vacation, you're on, you should be on vacation. Oh, <laughs> it's quasi vacation on Cassidy. Oh, okay. Oh, we Cassidy about... for a niece and nephew. <laughs> We're talking about August now. Yes. yes. Yep. So, David, what's... yeah, August. I think August twenty second. Can't remember why I said I couldn't make it. I thought maybe I was going to be visiting my daughter in London, but I think she's going to be in Switzerland. So maybe that's why. Um, I think. Why don't we put that a little bit on hold and do it by email, and you can double check that. But as far as I'm concerned if we could do the 22nd as opposed to the 8th, that would probably be a little bit better, but I could do either. Um, and if you're only available on the 8th, then I think we should go on the 8th, David. Um, yeah, the 22nd is because I have something else on the 8th. Um, I think the 22nd, my schedule, I usually keep it really up to date and, I, and I'm looking at it. And I don't remember why I said I couldn't, except unless it was that, that I thought I was going to see my daughter in the end of August, but that's not happening. Um, so I, uh, we can confirm this by email. Right. Yes. yes. I'm quite right. sure I can do it August 22nd. So are we talking about combining doing the July one on August 22nd? Is that part of what we're saying here? Plus anything else that comes up? I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Right, Nathan? Uh, well, actually, I, I, I need your clarification. So do you not want to do anything on July 25th either? Like, I'm, so I'm definitely not available. It never was on July 25th. I'm going right. to be out of state and I won't be able to even get on a call or a Zoom. So I just assume wait. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I guess the thing, you know, the thing to consider. Yeah. So. Um, the current special permit application that's uh, that's been submitted, they need three three members. So, oh, you um, only need three. Yeah, for special permit, you need three members. Yeah. Oh, okay. was there? Yeah, three three members is considered a full quorum, and you know, associate full a regular member doesn't matter. But as long as you can have a quorum of three members, you can. You, know, you can have three votes needed for the special permit. So 
uh, you know, from the applicant's perspective, obviously, because I think they, they submit, let me, let me stop sharing for a moment and let me see. And there is a, a timeline or deadline to have a hearing soon. Have us right, here within, right. I think, is so it 65, it may, it may 65, 65, 65 days. Uh, let me, give me one second. Let me just see when they submitted it. Um, What's wrong with August 8th? I don't understand. I think what Nathan August. is saying is we may, we is need if we have a hearing with August the three available okay. people, July 25th. Yeah, so David, you know, you marked yourself as not being available on July 25th, but all the, the other three members said they're available. So, um, sorry, give me one second. Why am I not? Uh, 49, 49. Yep, there you go. Yeah, so this person submitted their application on June 17th, about 10 days ago. I'll share so the waiting till August 22nd might be too late. Right. You know, especially for, for the applicant. Um, um, of course, you know, I understand the board has limited availability. Um, we could hold it on the 25th. So, yeah, if, yeah, so um, if, so let me confirm then, are the board, is the board available on um, July 25th? Well, I think Sherry, Maureen, uh, and Elizabeth are available. I am not. I am, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and so that will work. It's just that um, because it's exactly three, if one of you um, one of you be, has to, you know, one of you are, are not available. And actually, let me tell you, the. I mean, it's already in the public folder. So the address for that is 49 Man Terrace. So if you have a potential conflict of interest, uh, just so letting you know. 49, well, 49 man or, or MA. I might have a conflict of interest. You, you think you might? Well, as a, I could be in a butter. I don't know where 49 is, but my house backs on to Man Terrace. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me, uh, um, well, Let me just but if, we, if yeah. we move it to August 8th, which I can't do, but David can, that would still be within that window, that, that, 60 days window. Right, right. 65 or so. Yeah. Um, August 8th. And uh, yeah. And these kind of coordinations. So yeah, Perfect. August 8th could work. Yes. If. Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, um, I, I actually don't know your address, Maureen. So, I mean, I can look it up, obviously, but I don't know your exact address. So I actually don't know how close you are to 49 Man Terrace. Uh, maybe you can, it depends where the number yeah, starts. I'm can, at 197 yeah. Nonatuck if you want to look. but I'm, oh, I'm okay. looking right now. Hold on. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's see. 197 And Nathan, do you have the name of the owners in case? Oh, yes. The, the owner... Yeah, give me a second. Um, it it so, is quite a ways in terms of um, between Man Terrace, that's the one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like the seventh or eighth house down from the corner of Maple and Pine. Yeah, so yeah. I should be, I would be fine then. Yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah. right. It looks like the first house on Anta. Next to Maple, is that right? I'm yeah, you're 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 several houses over. You're yeah. you're yeah, yeah, you're away. Yeah, you're you're in the neighborhood, but you're definitely far enough. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's not a concern. I'll just double check the distance. Yeah, you you're actually. I mean, just drawing a straight line, line roughly. You're you're more than four hundred feet away. Yeah, so. my um. My ha my property is uh, has a wedge that goes all the way up to Man Terrace, so I come up as an abutter. Oh, oh, for interesting. properties there, yeah, yeah. But even if I draw a line from like, um, oh yeah, I, I maybe, think I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, but yeah, you're fine. So you're it's fine, not yeah. an it's nothing that would rule me out. That's all I'm saying. Right. Great. Yeah. So um, I mean, you know, um, I guess yeah, we just want to clarify whether you want to meet on July 25th for the hearing and 
the August 8th or 20th, choosing between one of the two dates in August, you know, you can, um, you, you can decide on that later if you need some more clarity about your schedule. Uh, and, and of course you can decide here and adjust later. So, but yeah, um, just to reiterate, um, how I can mark down July 25th as the July day for the ZBA and the August date you can either decide now or uh, decide later once uh, everybody's more clear on their schedule. Are you able to tell us the name of the possible new board member? Is that not? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, we don't know yet. I actually just emailed the mayor's office. Um, okay. I, okay. I don't. I, I sorry, I don't have the information now, but I haven't heard any big yet, anything yet. But doesn't mean it's not being processed. I just haven't there, heard. Anything. So there could be a new board member July twenty fifth as well, although brand new. So right, right, but it's kind of you know for for city operations, a one month turnaround from now to well, it might happen. Yes, it might happen. Yes, yes. Yeah. I just don't have the information right now. Apologize. I have a feeling I'm. I might, I might need to get sworn in again. I, I had some correspondence from the mayor's office. I oh, okay. Have to dig it out, but I have a feeling I'm, I'm supposed to get sworn in again. Right. Um, okay. I don't, I don't know if you have that information, but um, so, so I think we're saying the next meeting will be July 25th, and the August date is to be determined, and we'll because we have some more time to figure that out. So, so August TBD and uh, David, I will look into the um, uh, into the swearing in. But basically, you have to sign a, I think a swearing in statement at the city clerk's office. Pretty pretty quick process. Yeah, no, I I can run over there and um, as soon as we confirm that it, what I need to do. Um, okay, any anything uh, else? There were two. There was one agenda item that. I would be happy to hold on that you would put in there, Nathan, which was to review the letter we received. Yeah, I will literally. But I have like, not gone yeah. back to that. Yeah, I will literally say in two sentences. Um, you don't need to worry about it. The letter was meant for the planning board about them not allowing people to publicly speak over Zoom, but it mm -hmm. doesn't apply to us. So there was some misunderstanding, and I clarified it with the person who wrote the letter. Okay. She asked it to be sent to the zoning board as well, thinking zoning board operates in the same way as the planning board. Right, but, but we've always you, let yeah, people speak yeah. for sure. Yes, um, exactly. So you okay, I've recorded that. everything. Right. And um, okay, so I think maybe we can have well, a motion. I have one other yeah. point. Is that ha am I, have I officially become a full member? Like I got an email that said that I was being recommended to become a full member and I don't I don't want to weigh in there because it's possible that this new person who comes on board might be you know might have more expertise and might be a better full rather than alternate member but I don't under, I don't know my status I don't think we've ever brought in somebody new as a full member if only because it as we all know it takes time to sort of learn the ropes no matter what their expertise is but that's my two cents yeah, I think it's it just sort of administrative delays. But I think, Maureen, yeah, my understanding is you will be, you are already, or you are going to be, become a full regular member. So um, it's just kind of rotating basis. So, well, as members resign, you know, associate members become you know, regular members. So I, I will double check that too with the mayor's okay. office. So I'm check. a rising yeah. member. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rising full member. Yeah. Has everybody right. taken the, um, the required open meeting um, uh, information Perfect. training because uh, none of us want to have our name in the newspaper that we didn't do it. That's uh, So I'm just reminding people to maybe check on that. I appreciate that I get notified if, if there's any question on it and I have taken it my, you know, both times I've uh, renewed my, whatever status okay. so but if anyone does you. have a question yeah. check with either nathan or the i think it's the city clerk's office right there they yeah. submit the uh certificate to when you finish the little online course yeah there's gonna be open meetings and also conflict of interest right right, right. now so is um, that all done at the same session because or is that two different trainings 
I think it's two different trainings on the same portal. They're trying to unify. Uh -huh. um, nice. Yeah, so but it'll be two separate, uh, I mean, within one place, I think. I'm familiar with the conflict of interest, but not the open meeting. That doesn't sound. Or maybe, like... maybe I, maybe yeah, I get yeah. conflict of it's interest. Conflict of interest, yeah. They, I, I Nathan, honestly am not easiest... sure, Nathan, whether I've done that or not. So, yeah. could you send me the information again? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, is it possible, Nathan, somehow to coordinate with the city clerk to confirm if any of us need to be doing something that we're not aware of? Because they yeah. do sort of fly under the radar sometimes, but they are required. In fact, I know. I, I think I did conflict of interest. I'm not sure I remember open meeting unless it was all at the same time. It wasn't right. that long ago that I did it. Yeah, they have some different re renewal period requirements. I, I so I will yeah I will double check that for everyone. So yeah. the, the city make sure you're in good stead. Yeah, just you just don't. That would look. That would be awkward if. <laughs> we just and it doesn't take that right. much time to to finish it. You just have to carve out a bit of time. But but now I'm wondering if I uh, I have one missing. If uh, so, well, it would be really good if we could just all make uh, if Nathan uh, you could coordinate with the city clerk's. I think it's the city clerk's office to make sure we've done yes, all that. That's correct. And if anyone's missing anything, maybe you could get us the links or whatever we each need to finish up anything any of us need to finish up. Well, that'll probably happen is the city clerk will send you uh, or like automated link. You'll get an email from the city clerk saying, please take these. So so they they like calendar it. They make sure to reach out to us because I know that happened with me with a conflict of interest thing. So I took care of it. I think it's a little bit different for each city, but typically the city clerk actually has some kind of either a state level unified system or like a city level system that keeps track of those those elements, open meetings. Mm -hmm and the uh, conflict of interest. I'm maybe confusing with the state department, but somebody actually, somewhere, somewhere, um, either city at the, or at the state level, somebody actually keeps track. Um, sometimes they're not always prompt with notifying everybody who needs to be notified, but at least think they have it on file. So, so I'm looking at the website, uh, city website, and looking at the members on our board. And David, you and I, our term expires June 24. That, yeah, that must be why I heard from the mayor's office. Right, right. I have, I, I don't, I have not heard, except for some notice saying that they were planning and sustainability was recommending um, that I become a full member. So that was separate. So I, yeah, I need I guess, to run. I'm sorry. I'm going to oh, go, yeah. but oh, um, send us Thank emails you, on this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, oh, so we'll just do a real, uh, the, 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 I guess the other three of us can do the motion to adjourn. Why don't we let you Oh, go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Go we ahead. can, you can, yeah, I think you can go and the three of us can do the motion to adjourn. Okay. Anyway, Thank I think you. we've covered everything. Okay. So if you need to run, bye-bye, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. See you guys okay. later. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, Elizabeth. Bye. Um, so... I got something from the mayor's office. I was at the time I was swamped. <sighs> but but we don't have to do it now. So so uh Nathan's gonna look into it on his end. And for me, I'm gonna see if I can find this the email from the mayor's office asking. Oh yeah, it's come to my and attention. Nathan, I truly don't think I've done this. I don't remember getting anything like this. Yeah, you would know if you did it. You have to take yeah. this online course. It takes a, an hour or two i mean it's it's not 15 minutes uh-huh yeah i'm sure i didn't do it so i need to know about it so when you went to city hall to get sworn in sherry mm -hmm. um that's when they gave me you know like the you have to do this you have to do this you have to do this and they, they i don't gave... i don't remember anybody telling me anything like that um, it's possible but you know i got a busy life but um mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, I don't, I honestly don't remember that. Well, well, David and I are probably due to refamiliarize ourselves with it. Yeah. Sounds like we all need to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll check, uh, I'll do, I'll do some checks. Um, in the back back. Sounds good. Yeah. Nathan. And, and I'm filling out right now this, I guess I have to fill out an application to be reappointed. I'll get that in right, right now by the end of the night. Uh, but but I guess is there anything else or should we can we adjourn any other questions? Nothing. Okay. So we I guess just adjourn. motion to adjourn, please. Then. Okay. Um, I'll move to adjourn our meeting. Okay. I'll second.
Second, and just roll call, uh, right? Please, Nathan. By roll call, uh, David. Uh, yes. Maureen. Yes. And Sherry. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank so you. we're adjourned. Um, thank you, everybody.